So this is how the nightmare began for me and my family. On a good day, my mom told me to go and get her water. I was excited, so off I went. Hello, scary and mystery story lovers. Welcome back to the channel. This is a true story. If you love content like this, then please subscribe. That is, if you love content like this. Let's go in. Okay, so somewhere in the rural part of West Africa. That's where the story is coming from. A boy was asked by his mom to go get water for cooking. Because the rural part, most times they use the rivers for everything. They fish from it, they, they bat from it, they wash dishes, they cook, they drink, what, everything from the rivers. So... Lots of the kids love swimming and having fun on a snow, sunny day. So when his mother asked him to go fetch water for her, she, he was super excited. He went, grabbed the plastic jerry can and off he went to go get water for his mom. But he was not excited because he was going to get water for his mom. He was excited because he was going to the river and he would go there and swim and swim until his eyes are red before he's going to do what his mom asked him to do. That's what all the kids in the community do. So it is normal. When he got there, the stream was full with people. The fishermen were on the, on the side. The women washing their fufu were on the other side. Some people were washing clothes. Um, other kids were there washing dishes and swimming also. And the ones that came to fetch water like him. So it was just fun on the river. Everybody was swimming. All of a sudden, the kids in the water started screaming, We cannot find one of us somebody is missing somebody is missing it got the attention of the uh grown-ups the adults and off they went and started searching for this who was missing when they looked and they asked all the kids because in the community everybody knows everybody everybody knows everybody's name they counted themselves and they discovered who was not available that's the last boy that came to the stream to fetch water his plastic can was still there by the shore he had not filled it with water he wanted to swim first like other kids before he would fill it with water and go back home so they were wondering like where could he have gone? He was in the water. And the, the kids were saying he was here. He was here with us. He didn't go out of the water. So the adult immediately felt maybe he's caught up, like something caught him and he's drowning or something. So people were diving, searching, and the fishermen by the side, they came with their nets that you throw. They were throwing their nets to see if they can catch something. The divers, all of a sudden, you know, uh, the um, information was everywhere. The whole community came out and they were searching. They searched from this community, following the river with their canoe and the boats down to the next community and as they searched everywhere they could not find him they sent messages to down to seven community down if anything everybody would drop nets across the river everything just to see if they will find anything nothing was found and they were thinking okay let us wait after some days his body will float because when you die after some days you're going to float so they were waiting for him to surface so they can make funeral so the story got to his mom, his family members. They all came. They searched everywhere. They couldn't find him. His mom was crying. His brothers and sisters were crying. The community, everybody was sad because he was a young boy, a very young boy. So it was sad. The community was dull, was quiet. They had searched. They given up hope. Like, we can, we're not going to find anything. Um... Two days later, the community is down. We're sending messages that we're all searching also. We've not found anybody. We've not found anything. People that dropped nets and everything. Nothing has been found. So every day they will go in search. Now, after three days, they were not searching for him alive. They were searching to get his dead body so they can go bury him and do a funeral. So on the third day, when they were searching for him, they found him sitting somewhere far from his community by the shore. And when they went to grab him, he was kind of, he had surprised the people, the boat that found him and the people that went to pick him up from where he was sitting under uh, some tree close to the water side. 
they said he had a surprise in his face. Like he was wondering why were they so excited to see him and screaming and everything. He was like, have I not been gone for like less than a few minutes? Like, so they grabbed him, put him in the boat, bring him back to the community. And everybody was excited. People were screaming. People were, ex they, you know, even before they asked him what happened. And he was surprised, like, I have been here all the time with you people. Why are you people so, the whole community, what is going on? And I don't understand how I went from where I was swimming to where I was found. Like, something is not right. So they asked him what happened. He said all he knows was that when they were swimming and doing the hide and seek underwater to you look for people and you find the person and you come out and then another person will start searching for you people it's a normal game that um the kids in africa do when they swim in the rivers and all of that so he said as he was swimming all of a sudden he was like he was in another kingdom he was in another world all he knew was that the last thing he remembered that he was inside the water, but he doesn't understand how now it seems like he was in a village. He was in a community. He was, he could breathe, but the people he was seeing were kind of strange and he didn't recognize anyone. So he knew this was not his community and he didn't understand how he got there. All of a sudden they told him that they have to take him for judgment, something like a court, you know, like he has committed a crime or something. He said they took him to a place where lots of people were seated and they were asking him questions. And he said these questions they were asking him really didn't make any sense to him. And then from that first court, they took him to another place again where they had lots of more, even more people seated. And you, you could see like they were like powerful people seated and there were other people standing around them. And they kept interviewing him, asking him weird questions. He said he didn't understand and none of these questions made any sense to him. That's how they moved him from one place to the other, from one place to the other. Till the last place he said uh, they took him to. Uh, the head, the person, which was like a king or some type of ruler, a leader, told him to open both of his palms. He opened them. Then the person looked through it and said, uh, you have not killed anyone before. You have not done this. You've not done that. Started saying things to him and that your hands are clean. So he was wondering why were they uh, uh, telling him he has not done this. But another thing he said that was surprising to him was how they were able to point out certain things that he has done. You know, like if they ask him to go do something, if, if his parents, if he says he's not going. And things that happen in his life, in his family, that he, these people that he doesn't know, he has never seen. Not as if anybody from this group has visited his family before or something, or is from his community. How did they get this information? How did they know things about his private life and his personal life? He was kind of confused, but at the same time, he didn't know where he was. He didn't understand anything. But after the man told him that his hands were clean uh, and that he has not committed any crime, he had not, there's no blood in his hands, his hands are clean, so he is free to leave. Then they ordered somebody that took him from there that they told him that his hands were clean, so he's free to go back. And he said the next thing he knew, the person took him and they left that gathering and they were walking. And all of a sudden, he found himself at the bank of the river. And he didn't understand how he got there, where he was. So he just decided to just sit there because everything was strange. He knows that the last thing he remembered, he was swimming with other kids and now he was facing strange people that he doesn't really understand the type of interview or screening. There were questions that he was being asked. And now he finds himself close to the water again. It just didn't make sense to him. So after he, um, after they, he narrated this story, people were like, oh my goodness. This story that we've heard about people of the underwater kingdom, they've been talked about so many times. People has actually encountered them. 
But most times it is said that when people encounter them, they don't always come out alive. And there are signs of that you see if someone drowns naturally and someone that were taken or someone that was taken by these people, when their body surface, there is a difference you can see in the body. You know, so they felt like these underwater people took this young boy but because he was still a young boy he's he's still innocent so probably because of his innocent heart that was why he was let go but for him as a young child he really didn't understand much he just knew that he was in a strange place that didn't look like anywhere that he has ever been to all his life up until that point and he knew that the people that he saw were not like the people in his village or every other village or that he had seen in his life and the mannerism of the people also was quite different from people of his community his village or any other village but he did not know where he was he cannot show people where he was he cannot tell people anything he just know that he was in a place where he went through several screening where they were asking him questions upon questions like it was a judgment day like when somebody commit a crime in a community and they gather the elders and everybody gather and they start asking you then they give you punishment he said he felt that way because there were lots of people gathered and they were all at a point you know one after the other asking him different questions which he, he could not really answer and the questions were very strange and the last court they took him the last place they took him to was the place where the man told him that his hands were clean come, come comment down below share your own view have you heard about the underwater kingdom let me know in the comment section and let me know what do you think happened to this young boy